freedom, football, family, horses. Words synonymous with Vought and this great nation. Vought may be international now, but he was American first. Born from the hands of hardworking men and women just like you who know the value of an honest day's labor. Vought is more than a company. It's a testament of what Americans can do together. Today, we salute the real heroes. The ones who keep this country safe and sound by cracking open an ice cold turbo rush for the big game. To freedom, to football, to family, to horses. Hey everybody. I've been out on the campaign trail where Robert Singer and I have been hard at work bridging the divide between the human and superhuman communities. I've seen that divide firsthand in my three years running the FBSA. I had a front row seat as Stormfront viciously took the lives of countless congressmen and women. I even felt it last night as a milkshake hurtled towards me at a town hall amid chants of Soup Lives Matter. Rest assured, Soup Lives do matter. I don't even like using that word because you're not soup, you are super. You deserve to have a voice. You deserve a government that treats you fairly. And that's why when our ticket is elected, we'll be creating a new position designed to give the superhuman community a seat at the table. Honestly, it's mind blowing that it hasn't happened already. But strengthening protection of both humans and superhumans alike is our campaign's top priority. It's an honor to have bots and Homelander's endorsements as we take aim at that goal. And it would be an honor to have your vote. Let's get to work. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. The boys dropped a couple of new promos and trailers for season four, so we'll break it all down. Most of this is meant to be a parody of what's happening at the beginning of season four, sort of carrying off the boys' Gen V. Like, it's meant to carry over right after the events of that. Obviously, it's all very tongue-in-cheek. Most of the parodies here should be obvious, like the stuff that they're actually parodying, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. Probably the biggest aspect that's going on in Season 4 is the whole election of it all, because in the USA right now, if you live outside the USA, there's actually a big presidential election happening this year, so very timely that The Boys is actually doing their presidential election within the context of the story this season. They started with that Super Bowl trailer, which is meant to be a parody of classic Budweiser ads with the Clydesdale horses. Like, there were a couple of posts of the VOD account and other accounts making fun of this post in this trailer, talking about why didn't they get the Clydesdale horses? Just because in those classic Budweiser ads, they always use the Clydesdale horses. But because it's inside the universe of the boys, we're talking about Turbo Rush in place of Budweiser. They've been clowning on A-Train's Turbo Rush brand for a long time now. Like, during Gen V, they were talking about how it tasted like piss. Like, I'm not going to be promoting piss here. But they're presenting it as if you're a person inside the universe of the boys watching this. Like, this is the way people inside the boys' universe would be seeing Vought ads on television. The whole idea is that Vought controls most of the media, like most of the television networks, the radio stations, everything everyone sees and everything everyone hears. And it's all generally meant to be propaganda, meant to prop up anything that Vought is doing. Just basically help them sell more merchandise and get people to spend more money on their stuff. Then they released a more campaign season four specific ad from Victoria Newman, who's releasing this as if it were like a real life campaign ad for her ticket with Robert Singer for the White House. She's running for vice president. Robert Singer is their candidate for presidency. What she's talking about is creating this special position inside the government of the United States for a superhero person to advocate for superhero matters. That's why she keeps referencing Soup Lives Matter, which is a parody of Black Lives Matter. They kind of got into this during Gen V, like she talks about getting the milkshake thrown at her during a town hall. That was during the Gen V series. Soup lives matter! Can you state once and for all whether superheroes have civil rights? And essentially, the position inside the government for this superhero person to advocate for superhero matters is meant to be for Homelander. That's why they also released this promo art with him celebrating with Victoria Newman on stage, because it seems like in all the trailer footage, they want you to believe that they've won. Like at the beginning of the season, they will have won their bid to the White House, meaning that Homelander has his in to the White House because he made the arrangement with Victoria Newman to help her out. Previously, this was all part of Stan Edgar's plan to get superheroes in the White House and gain control over the White House. 
So he'd been training Victoria Newman to be that person, but she stabbed him in the back, which he was pleasantly surprised by. Like, oh, I kind of trained you to do that and you did what you were trained to do. So I'm pleasantly impressed by it. Maybe we'll see Stan Edgar come back at some point. He's still alive. But she keeps talking about Soup Lives Matter and they release this promo art of Homelander's fist closed down over their two fists like President Robert Singer and Vice President Victoria Newman, all about making America super again. And they're basically trying to show you that it's going to be more like President Homelander, which is kind of a vibe that they had at the end of the boys comic book where Homelander had planned to take over the White House. Now, obviously, the boys comic book ends in a very different way than the TV show is going to end. They, they changed the plot on the TV show because it's going way past the plot in the comics. But a lot of what's happening right now with them trying to get into the White House is similar to what was happening in the boys comic book. There's this brand new character that kind of spells this out for him and helps him evolve his grand plans right now, basically setting the match so that America burns itself to the ground and then he'll be the person to swoop in and save everyone so everyone will love him no matter what he's done in the past and essentially turn himself into something more akin to God Emperor Homelander. Somebody outside the government who everybody trusts, who he's hoping that everyone will just hand authority over to when he fixes everything. But before that happens, America still has to burn itself to the ground, which it looks like it's well on the way to doing during all the trailer footage. That's also meant to be a parody of what's happening, at least in the United States right now too. So essentially, Homelander is trying to slowly take over the White House, so to speak. But really, he probably doesn't really care about the actual United States government. He just wants to be in charge of the United States. It's all part of his evolving grand plan. Like you look in the early seasons, what did he want? He just wanted people to love him. But then he started to realize that he could do pretty much anything he wanted and people would still love him. It wouldn't matter till we get to now where he's like, okay, now I really want to take over. He wants to rule with an iron fist, and this is all part of that grand plan. And while this is going on, you have Butcher and the boys basically trying to get rid of him and get rid of the Seven. Not totally clear what Butcher's plan is because the temporary calm Palpy basically messed him up so bad that he doesn't have that long to live. Like there is definitely a ticking clock. There were a couple of deleted scenes from the end of The Boys Season 3 too that kind of spell this out a little more literally. Attempting further treatment would significantly impact your quality of life without necessarily extending the time you have. How long I got? Months, 12, 18 on the outside. Part of the idea is they just want to let you know that however long the boys goes, like he'll just survive to the very end of the boys series and he will die at the end of the series. So I think all he really cares about now is killing Homelander before he dies himself. They are doing this weird release plan where like they release the first three episodes when the season drops in June, which isn't that long off. So what they might do is have them win the election in like the first episode or the first two episodes and then just move past that to the main plot of the season during like episode three. They've kind of been turning Homelander into a Trump parody like they did that during season three, but I think they're slowly moving past that in season four and he's on this more God Emperor Homelander arc like it's gone to more superhero territory the way you would expect because this is more of a superhero parody kind of story. A lot of people also ask too if Victoria Newman is so afraid of Homelander, why doesn't she just pop his head? Can she pop his head? Like is she powerful enough to pop his head like everyone else? Because during the trailer, it's funny too how she blames all the popping heads on Stormfront. Like I was sitting in that courtroom watching while Stormfront killed all those people when really it was her. She was the one that was killing them all. She's meant to be just as bad as Homelander. But I think part of the idea is that Homelander is meant to be so powerful that she could not pop his head even if she tried. Otherwise, she probably wouldn't have hesitated to do that a long time ago. And if it really came to it, like if Homelander really got tired of her, he probably would not hesitate to kill her either. But generally right now, they're just putting up with each other because of this arrangement to take over the White House, take over the government, basically. She gets named to vice president, Robert Singer's president, and they let Homelander do pretty much whatever he wants to do. While that's happening, they basically just take advantage of all the different people, like the different political parties in America, just telling them whatever they want to hear. Remember, Victoria Newman had that Compound V weapon in her hands and she's got it on the DL. So it sounds like she's going to use it or she wants to use it at some point, maybe as a deterrent. My early theory during the Gen V episodes when they were sort of getting into the weeds on that is that it wouldn't work on Homelander. Like she might try to use it on Homelander and it might just not work. It'll either turn into some twist like that or there'll be a left turn because theoretically it would kill all superheroes all over the planet and I don't think they want that to happen. But somehow things will not go the way that Victoria Newman is planning them to go. Probably the other big brand new character they're introducing is Jeffrey Dean Morgan's character. He's playing Joe Kessler aka Monkey from the boys comic book. 
Even though they make it seem like it's a really big deal here, he is an old acquaintance of Butcher's. But the big joke is his nickname is Monkey because of this mission that went awry with him and Butcher back in the day. Kessler had always been part of the CIA. Butcher had used him for information gathering in the past. On one particular ill-fated mission, Kessler and Butcher were going to Doc Peculiar's brothel to get more information. Doc Peculiar is meant to be a parody of Doctor Strange in the Marvel Universe. While they were at the brothel, Kessler got abused in both of his ears. That's like the nicest way I could put it. Abused in both of his ears by two different monkeys. And henceforth, Butcher would not stop making fun of it, referencing him, calling him monkey every time they met. He's also got a really weird fetish for female paraplegics too, so maybe there'll be some kind of reference to his degeneracy and all the ways he was traumatized by those monkeys in the past. But part of the reason why you have so many supernatural actors showing up on The Boys, like there are a ton of them, I've referenced most of them in previous videos, is because the showrunner for The Boys was the creator of the Supernatural series. So we're just slowly going around getting all the big Supernatural actors. Now we just need Jared Padalecki to come on and play a character. Let me know in the comments who you would want him to play if he comes on the series in a future season. But the next big series that I'll be doing episode videos for in the next couple weeks will be Invincible Season 2. We're actually pretty likely to see an Invincible and Boys crossover. Like, it's way more likely that that would happen just because Amazon controls both of those series. And X-Men 97 episodes getting everybody ready for X-Men coming back in Deadpool 3. So it's going to be a really great March. Make sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss anything. Everybody click here for my Invincible Season 2 Episode 5 trailer video and click here for my brand new Deadpool and Wolverine video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.